Hello, I'm Harold Jones, Dean of the School of Health Professions at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Thanks for joining us for another discussion in our continuing monthly series where we interview experts in our school. These experts are leaders helping to shape the future of healthcare through tailoring innovative solutions to real world problems. Joining us today is Dr. Patricia Jennings. Dr. Jennings is the program director of UAB's Surgical Physician Assistant Program. She is also a nationally recognized authority on infectious diseases with specialty expertise in the prevention and treatment of HIV AIDS. Dr. Jennings has served as project director for the CDC funded Alabama North Carolina STD Prevention and Training Center, has developed a model national curriculum for physician assistant students in the area of AIDS prevention and treatment, and practices clinically at the Birmingham Veterans Administration HIV AIDS Clinic. Pat, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Could you tell us a little bit about how you became involved uh, in studying and in the prevention and treatment of HIV and AIDS? In the early 80s, I was a medical technologist and I worked in a private physician's office in Richmond, Virginia. We started seeing AIDS-related illnesses, only um, these were in seemingly healthy gay men. Uh, journal articles were being published about GRID, gay-related immune diseases. Uh, when I entered the physician assistant program at Duke University, I was, had the privilege of working in one of the first clinical trials uh, with AZT. And uh, you'll remember that up until 1996, individuals with HIV and AIDS were dying on a weekly basis. It was very frustrating. We had to teach one another um, based on uh, case reports and journal articles how to care for patients. After graduation, I went to a family practice office in Richmond, Virginia, and there were three gay men with AIDS. None of the other physicians had any experience treating uh, AIDS patients, and so uh, I became the teacher. And the only weapon we had at that time was prevention. And so we taught each other uh, and we got the message out of prevention. As of today, without a vaccine to prevent HIV, our only weapon remains prevention. Uh, Pat, it's been almost 30 years since we first became aware of HIV and AIDS. And there was a lot of discussion of it during the 90s and the early 2000s. However, it seems like lately we've seen HIV and AIDS issues move off the front pages in healthcare. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? And why is that happening? In some ways, moving off the front page is a good thing. Hopefully, the stigma that's been attached to HIV and AIDS is diminishing. No longer do we think of HIV and AIDS as a gay male disease. In fact, we're becoming more and more aware of the heterosexual transmission of HIV and AIDS. With multiple medication classes, people are living longer and the public is perceiving HIV in more of a chronic disease state rather than the death sentence that it was in the 80s and early 90s. Unfortunately, moving off the front page also has um, a, a downside. Money is not being uh, provided for research. Um, once again, we don't have a vaccine to prevent this disease. It remains in epidemic proportions and we really need to concentrate on prevention. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services has designated March the 10th as National Women and Girls HIV AIDS Awareness Day. Why is there this special emphasis on this segment of the population? If I may read some statistics for you from the Alabama Department of Public Health website, AD ph.org. Um, in 2009, nearly a quarter of diagnoses of HIV infection in the United States were among women and girls 13 years and older. Additionally, almost 184 
1,000 women and adolescent girls were living with HIV at the end of 2008. Women and girls of color bear a disproportionate heavy burden of HIV infection. In 2009, for adult and adolescent females, the rate of diagnosis of HIV infection in black females was nearly 20 times higher than that of whites. The reason women of color are more severely burdened by HIV and AIDS is not directly related to race and ethnicity, but rather to some barriers faced by many in those communities. We call those social determinants. So you'll remember that social determinants have to do with uh, poverty, uh, living conditions, uh, accessibility to health care, age, um, and, and it's the social determinants, especially for women of color in the South, um, that are not provided the opportunities that others um, may have. It, the CDC estimates that one in five people living with HIV infection in the United States don't know that they're infected. So the important message is you need to get tested. You need to test yourself. You need to make sure your partner's tested because 85% of women and adolescent girls who are newly infected got infected from a male partner. You seem to be constantly bringing up this importance of testing. Why is it do you think that people don't get tested? Fear. They're afraid to get tested. It's like saying the word cancer. People are afraid. And yet, we know that of the newly infected individuals, they were infected by someone who was unaware of their HIV status. So early detection equals prevention. We'd like the message to be, you get tested for diabetes on a regular basis. You go to the drugstore, you have your blood pressure checked. Why? To see if you are hypertensive so that you can get that treated. Getting an HIV test should be just as routine. You should get tested, know your status, get into early treatment, prevent the spread if you are positive. If you're negative, perhaps you will change your behaviors. Everyone knows how this virus is spread. So if you know you're negative, if you've been engaging in perhaps some risky behavior, it provides you with an opportunity to say, okay, now I'm going to change. As we think about issues related to women and girls, are there any specific challenges that you want to share with us about HIV and AIDS as they uh, relate to this particular segment of the population? If you're a woman, especially if you are of childbearing age, you need to know your status so that you don't transmit this virus to your unborn child. Getting tested for HIV while you're pregnant is also very important and is offered routinely at your OB office. Since 1982 in Alabama, there have been 156 infants who have been tested positive for HIV disease. Since 1999, we know 300 HIV infected women have delivered babies and only 10 of those babies are HIV positive. With early testing, detection, and treatment, we like to bring this number to zero. And we, we feel we can do that. So once again, the message is know your status, seek early treatment, be on the educational bandwagon of prevention. There are several websites that I'd like to direct people to. Um, one is the CDC website, www.cdc.gov. Another website is the Alabama Department of Health, adph.org. You can find statistics on your particular county. You can find where to get tested for free. Every single health department in Alabama will 
um, provide an HIV test for free. And um, it will also give you the facts so that you can educate your family, your friends, perhaps your sexual partner. Thank you again for joining us today, Pat, and sharing your expertise about HIV and AIDS, and particularly about how it impacts the health of women. Thank you for asking me to come. If you have any questions or comments about this topic, please feel free to contact us at uab.edu slash shp slash contact. And while you're on our website, be sure to learn more about our school. Once again, thank you for joining us today. I'm Harold Jones, Dean of the UAB School of Health Professions, where we are shaping the future of healthcare through tailoring innovative solutions to real-world problems.